The following program is made possible by the friends and partners of Daniel Fusco Ministries. Hey everybody, my name is Daniel Fusco and welcome to today's Real Show. There's something called hashtag FOMO, the fear of missing out. Do you ever have that feeling? Like, am I really getting at the things I'm supposed to be getting at? Am I really living the best life that I could? This happened for me when I was in my early 20s. I had always desired to be a professional musician and I was well on my way to that. But I started having this nagging feeling like, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? It's what I've always been doing. It's been on the, the trajectory I've been on, but is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? So I had a paradigm shift in my own life because I very quickly realized that the path that I was on was the wrong path because I hadn't taken the time to discover what I was uniquely created to be. I was doing what made sense given where I thought I wanted to go, never once asking, who am I really and how did God make me? So I'm gonna give you the keys to explore this today so that you can find the best life that God has for you. Now, I know for some of you, you're like, hey, I don't think I've ever really watched a program like this. I kind of want to, and I hear that from people all the time. I believe that's happening because God is inviting you to take a little step closer to Him, and I promise you, you take that little step, God will meet you right where you are. So you ready to get real on today's program? I'm ready, let's go. So each one of us are creatures of habit. We, there's certain things about each one of our lives that without any influence from the outside, you just kind of live this way. Like, let me give you an example. If I, if I were to sit each one of you down, don't worry, I'm not going to do that right now, and say, what's your usual breakfast? Right? For most of us, we have like, this is our usual breakfast. When, when all else fails, this is what I eat for breakfast. When, uh, if I were to record, and don't worry, I'm not doing that, uh, all of your phone calls for an entire day. I'm pretty sure that almost every conversation will begin with the same way. Hey, how you doing? Hello. You know, like, how, how, however it is, like, we, we have these go-to places in life that is, so much of life is actually lived right there, right? It's like, where if I were to say to you, okay, let's go out to eat. Where's your favorite place, right? There's a certain place. Out of all the different places maybe you go out to eat, there's certain places that are your go-to spots, and life is full of this. And if you start to think about what real life is, real life is a collection of all of these things that almost start to happen on autopilot. That you left up to your own devices, this is what is your rhythm. This is what is the thing that you like to do. And I'm here to tell you that as we close out our Real Talk series, what I wanna share with you today is not new. You've heard it many times before, not only here, but if you know anything about Jesus, this is what it's all about. And this text that we're going to look at today is actually go-to Christianity. Like, you want to know what Christianity is all about? What we're going to see today is it. And so I've called this message Real Life because I was just talking with someone just before service, and I was so grateful for it because they said, you know, so how do you continue to follow Jesus strongly, you know? And, and, and I was just like, well, listen, I don't think I do that all, all that perfectly by any means, but what I do know is that life is messy, and I do know that distractions abound, but I try very hard to keep these very simple, most important things in front of me at all times. That when all else fails, if I remember some very specific things that we find in the scriptures, even if everything goes wrong, if I get these things kind of right, it's gonna look pretty good. And so... Today is important because it's not going to be new, but we have to say, Lord, I want this to be my go-to way of living. Like just the way, what's your go-to breakfast? What's your go-to way of starting a conversation? What's your go-to uh, programs that you enjoy, the things that you entertain yourself with? This needs to be your go-to spirituality. What I wanted to do is, with this message, I also want to weave in some of our kind of our core values as a church because... You know, when it comes to who we are as a church, if who we are is not completely linked to the core foundation of teachings of Jesus, then we're really not a church. We could be a spiritual club, we could be all sorts of things, but a church is the called out assembly of Jesus, the people who are following Jesus. And so as you see what is a, gonna be a foundational teaching of Christianity, I also wanna weave in some of our, 
our, our church core values, things that you hear all the time that are guiding principles for us that are coming pretty much right out of this text as well. So to get into it, let's open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 22. We're going to be taking verses 34 to 40. Matthew 22, 34 to 40. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Anybody ever read that before? Anybody ever heard this before? Amen. Repetition is the greatest teacher. Oftentimes, we don't need to hear something new. We need to be reminded of the things that we've always known. I need to say, Lord, help me by the power of your spirit to live this out. Now, to, to, to start out, we're, we're in this place in the ministry of Jesus, and really almost the entire series has been there where Jesus is about to go to the cross, And from the time that he was triumphantly entered into Jerusalem where they herald him as the Messiah, he's been getting grilled by all these different groups of people. And in a lot of ways, you may miss it if you don't think about it, but if you look at the Exodus narrative of the Passover, you find that on the 10th day of the month, they chose the Passover lamb, and then they inspected the lamb for a number of days. And as long as the lamb was truly without blemish, then that lamb was allowed to be sacrificed. And Matthew's gospel is actually working that framework because Jesus' triumphal entry, it was the day of the presentation of the lamb, and then you have all these days of him being inspected by all these different groups of people, of all these different agendas, to see if indeed he was spotless. He was indeed perfect. And this is their last-ditch effort right here. It begins with this, when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Now, I like to say it this way. You want to know about real life? You need to live different. You need to live different. Because as I've been explaining to you, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they had two different sets of agendas. And before their dislike of Jesus, the two really never came together. They were on opposite sides of the spectrum. And they didn't get along at all. But now we have this enemy of my enemy is my friend scenario, which is a very common way the world works. And we start from the beginning where you have the the Sadducees on one side and the Pharisees on the other side, even though the Pharisees couldn't deal with Jesus and the Sadducees like, well, if we get, get up together, we can get this thing done. And I want to encourage you to make sure that in the way that you live your life, you are living different from a broken, fallen world that functions these type of ways. Where instead of saying, maybe we're all wrong and Jesus is right, they say, we just got to make sure we get this thing done. And it's very easy in the world that we live in to neglect living into the kingdom because the world functions a certain way. And I've been really sensing that the Lord has been encouraging me personally to make sure that I do not conform to a world that is in rebellion against him. To encourage my brothers and sisters in Christ to say, don't let a broken world that Jesus had to, God had to send Jesus to redeem, don't let this world teach us how to live. We let Jesus teach us how to live. But we all live in this world, don't we? And so because we live in this world, it's hard not to be conformed to the way things work. And there's so much compromise within the body of Christ, within us as as the people of God, because we live in this world. And I think God is saying, I want you to live different. The, the, the Pharisees and the, and the Sadducees, them joining up together to try and deal with Jesus. It's just the way the world works. Now, we, we learn in verse 35 that one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him. Now, this idea of this lawyer, you have to remember that when we think of a lawyer, 
right? We think of somebody who wears a suit, they go into the court of law, they argue their case, even though that's really not what most lawyers do. That's just kind of our TV perception of them. You know, uh, I have a, my twin sister Jody is a lawyer, and she's like, man, I went into being a lawyer thinking I was going to be in the courtroom, I was going to be giving opening statements, and she's like, I spend a lot of time in my office writing, you know? But a lawyer in Jesus' day were the scribes. They were the people. The law was actually the first five books of Moses that we've been studying on Wednesday nights. And their job was primarily to be copying. This was long before uh, copiers and Xerox machines and Amazon. You just get the book you want in the mail. It's like someone had to actually sit there and write the whole thing out. And so the scribe's primary job was to be writing copies of the law. And also they were involved in interpretation. Right? So this lawyer, it's like, I always have to think, I'm like, oh, so a lawyer came, you know? But, but this was, they were religious teachers. And so this lawyer from this group of Pharisees and Sadducees come to Jesus and they're asking him a question. Now, what you're going to find is his question is important, but he's testing him, so his question's not honest. And it's something, that's something we've been seeing all the way through this series, is that we need to make sure we ask honest questions. And Jesus is very interested in answering honest questions with real answers. Oftentimes, Jesus won't answer a dishonest question because he knows it's not rooted in something that's real. Now, as a church family, because we realize that people are growing, we have a, a core value that we like to say that we are all in process. How many times have you heard me say that from the pulpit? Pretty much every message. Why? Because it's so true. All of us are in process. There's not a person here who isn't in process of being transformed by Jesus if you're in Christ. And even if you're here today and you have never put your faith and trust in Jesus, guess what? You're growing every single day. There's nothing about your life that is truly static. It's all dynamic. I know we kind of want things to stay static. We don't want things to change, but every single day things are changing in your body, in the world, all this stuff's constant. It's always in motion. The idea of things not changing is an illusion. It's an illusion. I think about my little kids. Every single day they're growing. But what happens is, is as you get a little bit older, you're still growing every single day. And so we really, we really believe here that we need to give people room to be in process. You go to a lot of churches, like you have to have it all together day one. You walk in the door, you have to be carrying the right body, you have to say all the right words, you have to have it all together. And, and as a church family, we say everyone's in process. From the oldest of us to the youngest, for the person who's here who's been walking with Jesus the longest to the person who's gonna give their life to Jesus here today, everyone is growing. And when you realize that you are growing, you become a gracious human being. But what happens in church very easily is that we don't live different because we say, I got it all together. This is who I am. Everyone's got to be like me. And you forget the fact that, no, no, God ain't done with you yet. That's why you're still here. You know? And so as a church, we value the fact that you're allowed to be in process here. Why? Because you're in process anyway. And too often, I think, what goes on in the family of God is we think that you can stop growing spiritually. Because my Bible says you're either growing spiritually or you're backsliding. You're either growing in Christ or you are degenerating in Christ. Every single day is a day for God to do a work. And so no matter where you are today, are you living different today? Because no, no matter how you walked in today, when I say we need to live different from this world because Jesus is doing a work and he's transforming us, there's something for all of us to look at, right? It's easy to look at what someone else needs. Yeah, they need to live differently that way. But what about me? You're in process today. And when you're in process, you need to say, Lord, I want you to drive this process in my life. Now, because we're all in process and God is calling us all to live different, another core value that we have here is that we are passionate about seeing people take the next steps. I love this. There's a passion in this church to see all of us take the next steps, whatever that next step is. So that's why when people say yes to Jesus right here in the sanctuary, or they do it online, I pray that many of you who are here today who've never done that, you'll take that first step. What do we do? We celebrate it. Why? Because you're taking the next step on your journey. 
We are, see, when someone steps into, who's been walking with Jesus, when they step into the waters of baptism, like we're gonna see probably 30, 40, or 50 people after second service. We cheer, and we holler, and we take videos, and we post it online, why? Because we're passionate about people, seeing people take the next step. When someone decides to step into the work of ministry, you know what we do? We celebrate it, why? Because we're, you're taking the next step on the journey. See, what is the next step on the journey? See, it would have been great for this lawyer, this scribe, to really want to know the answer to the question he's going to ask. I mean, how cool would it have been for that man to come with an honest question, and then he answers, Jesus answers that question, and he goes away, and he takes the next step. He's not really going for that, but how beautiful would that have been? And so... What is the next step that God has for you in this journey? See, what, what I've realized is that when someone comes to know Jesus, it is a huge change. When all of a sudden you find yourself in Christ, and then you start walking in, in that first period, just like with little kids, it's like everything is huge. The first time you pray with someone, the first time you experience the gifts of the Spirit, the first time you're like, whoa, but then what happens is, and a lot of us are in that phase where it's like, you're still growing every day, but everything's not so like, oh, I didn't know it was like that. Like, I remember the first time, I remember the first time I heard of a Bible commentary. You know, it's not like you get saved and the Bible says, read a Bible commentary. You know, I didn't even know the thing existed. All of a sudden, I was, someone handed me, it was a J. Vernon McGee through, you know, through the Bible. You know, the little white books with the, with the yellow covers. Someone gave, I was like talking about a book. I didn't know. I'm like, I don't understand that at all. And someone came the next week, like, here, I got a gift for you. I'm like, what's this? And I mean, I devout, I, I ate that book. It was so cool. They're like, yeah, there's all sorts of these things. I'm like, really? You know? Now I got a whole library full of them. But that first one was mind blowing, right? But what happens is, is even though certain things aren't mind-blowing as you've been down the road for a while, there's still the next step to take. What's the next step that God has for your life? What is the thing that right now, given all that's going on in your world, what's the one step he wants you to take? Brothers and sisters, I want to just encourage you to take that step. And as a church family, we're going to come alongside of you. We're going to celebrate because we're passionate about everyone taking the next step. Not one of us is, okay, you're done walking. Now you just sit spiritually. We don't want to be those type of people, amen? So we need to live differently. Now, so he comes with this question, and this is an important question. What does he say? He says, teacher, verse 36, what is the great commandment in the law? Now, this is an important question, of course, because the rabbis would tell us that there are not 10 commandments in the Bible. There are 613 commandments commandments. Now, just, I always like to make the joke. It's like understanding the IRS tax code, right? Anybody understand the IRS tax code? Yeah, we all do. There's too many of those laws. No one can understand it. So for the Jewish people, it was a very common discussion of we need to prioritize and weight certain commandments because 613 is a lot and we're going to try, but we really want to know what is the most important core questions. And so this was a common question of the day. And Jesus answered quite simply, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Now, know what I like to call this? That you and I need to live upward. We need to live upward. Which is the idea of the, the, the greatest commandment, it, it deals with God first. Right? And so I like to call it upward because I always think of the idea of worship, that, we're, that we're, we're raising up our hearts and we're raising up our hands and we're saying, God, I want to praise you. And, and there's something exalting about this whole thing because God is exalted and he's majestic. And so I call that living upward, right? And, he, and it's a quotation from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. So Jesus took Deuteronomy 6, 5, that verse right in that classic prayer that was prayed by Jewish people every single day, that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. I mean, here it doesn't say strength, but in Mark's gospel it does. And so the idea is that when it, when it relates to living upward, it's all about love, and it's all about God, and it involves all of us. 
Did you get that? It's all about love. It's all about God. And it involves all of us. That's, that's how we live different, is that you and I radically live upward. Now, you got to ask yourself, is it all about love for you? See, God isn't interested in you being a, a captain in his army who doesn't love him but is simply obedient. See, love is a powerful thing. We're going to look at it for Christmas time, that the greatest of these is love. Love is the most revolutionary activity in the world when we speak of biblical love, of course. I always like to say we got to define these words because you guys know I love me some Twinkies. But that is not the type of love that God is talking about. It's a different, it's a different type of love because the love of the Bible is self-sacrificial. See, when you live upward, it's about loving God. Would you say right now, I love God more than I ever have? So like in your marriage, would you say you love your spouse more than you ever have? See, there's an old saying that says familiarity breeds contempt. And what happens is, and, and we find Jesus speaking to the church in Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2 about this. Because they've been walking with Jesus for a while, but they had left that young love phase. Right? They, they left that time. Because you know what it is when it's young love. I remember when Lynn and I first got married, we were sitting with some, some friends, and, 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 and we, were, we were brand newly married, and we were hanging on each other, and let me, let me, you know, being sweet and stuff. And one of these older sisters said, oh, nothing quite like young love, is there? And I remember thinking about that. Because you know what it is? It's like when someone first puts their faith and trust in Jesus, man, they are loving Jesus something sappy. You know? It's like, you know, when you love Jesus, you're the first one. The church doors open. You're there like, oh, you know? And no one else is in there. There's nothing, nothing going on. But you're like, oh, Jesus. You know? Every Facebook post is like, man, you're just like gushing on Jesus. Everyone's like, get a room. You know? I was inappropriate. Sorry. But you know what I mean? But then you know what happens over time, you get used to loving Jesus. You get used to the fact that God loves you and that you respond to his love and it kind of wanes a little bit. Me and, you know, me and Lynn talk about this a lot. We've been married for 12 years. We've got three kids and it's like, you know, we need to, where we were all cute and hand-holding and hugging and, and, and whispering, it's like you lose that over time if you're not careful. So, is your walk with Jesus really deeply devotional? The, ho the whole of who you are, all your heart, soul, in Mark's gospel, strength and mind. Now, these categories are not meant to be separated and discussed, although we can. But in the Hebrew language, this meant the totality of who you are, all your faculties, your heart, the control center of your life, your mind, your thought life. So just as I was sharing in the message, we all need to learn how to live differently. Now, for some of you, you've been following Jesus for a while, and this is an important reminder. Make sure that you are getting at things uniquely as God would have it. But I realize that for many of you, today is the day that you're gonna totally begin to live differently because you're gonna begin to follow Jesus. Rather than going your own way, you're gonna choose to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that he may lead you into the unique person he created you to be. So if that's you and you're giving your life to Jesus right now, I want you to pray a prayer with me. And this prayer is just an acknowledgement to God that you have received salvation in Jesus. So repeat these words, say, Jesus, I give you my life. Thank you for saving me. I believe in you, your life your death on the cross, and your resurrection. Forgive me of my sins and fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And we all agreed together and said, amen. I'm so excited for you that you have begun this journey with Jesus, but I wanna help you take all the next steps. So I want you to pull out your mobile phone. I want you to text the word SAVED to 51400. That's right, S-A-V-E-D to 51400. Someone from my team is gonna get in touch with you and we wanna get resources into your hands to help you on the journey. So don't go anywhere though. I have a big idea that is very important for you as you continue on this journey. You can take part in the amazing work God is doing through the powerful message that although life is messy, Jesus is real. 
By partnering with Daniel Fusco Ministries, you help make programs like this available to people who may not otherwise experience the love and hope only found in Jesus. With your regularly scheduled partnership, your generosity can help transform lives forever. Go to danielfusco.com slash partner now and become a part of the Daniel Fusco Ministry support team with your regularly scheduled or one-time gift. Be the hands and feet of Jesus in your world and become a partner today. Hey everybody, Daniel Fusco here. Welcome to today's Two Minute Message. No matter where you are, start your weekdays with an encouraging thought from Pastor Daniel. You'll find his popular Two Minute Messages on Facebook, or you can subscribe to them on YouTube so you don't miss any of them. Each weekday, Pastor Daniel brings insight and encouragement on important topics that affect your life in only two minutes or less. Join the community now. Go online and search for Daniel Fusco on Facebook or Pastor Daniel Fusco on YouTube. If you're looking for a church family in the greater Portland, Vancouver metro area, we invite you to check out Crossroads Community Church. We are a family of faith, fully engaged, transforming our community and our world. And we would love for you to become a part of what God is doing through the Crossroads family. We have campuses in Vancouver, Washington and Southwest Portland. For service times and directions, visit crossroadschurch.net. Well, we're just about out of time on today's program, but I love connecting with you. The single best way to connect with me is through my website, danielfusco.com. Sign up for my newsletter so you get some resources from me in your inbox. Make sure you tell me what's going on in your world. Join me on all the different social media outlets. I do different things on Instagram, Facebook with the two minute messages, on Twitter. I would also love for you to check out my brand new book, Upward, Inward, Outward. Loving God, loving yourself and loving others. You can get it wherever you like to buy books and join us at Crossroads Community Church. So many people are finding us there at crossroadslive.tv for our online campus. I'm gonna share with you a big idea. This is huge. Your best life is found in you being who God uniquely created you to be. So seek the Lord that you may understand that. Okay, I gotta go, but never forget, although life is messy, Jesus is real, and he loves us even in the midst of our messy lives. God bless you.